Hey guys, it's Darwin here with my weekly Q&A to answer some more of your questions. If you want to leave a question for next week's Q&A, you can either leave it in the comment box below or send me a video question over to darwinonthetrail at yahoo.com and then next week I'll answer as many as I possibly can. All right, so let's go ahead and get into this week's first question. Do you do any stretching prior or during a big hike? Also, do you take vitamin I regularly? So, um, yeah, I do a lot of stretching. For years, I raced triathlon, so I did some yoga to kind of keep myself limber. So yes, I do try to stretch as much as possible in the morning before I start hiking, and then at the end of the day, when I get into camp, I try to do some like basic runner stretches, like pulling up my leg, stretching out my knee, stretching out my spine, because you know if you get to camp, you've been hiking all day, putting your body through stress, and you go to sleep, and you don't stretch, Typically in the morning you wake up and you're pretty damn stiff and pretty sore, so I try to stay on top of that. Now I'm not going to say that I always do because sometimes you just get to camp, you're completely wore out and all you want to do is break camp and eat food, but I try to do that as much as possible. As far as vitamin I, yeah, unfortunately kind of all long distance hikers do take a lot of ibuprofen. It's not that great for you and I only do it whenever I'm doing a really long hike. Take a little bit in the morning and then maybe a little bit at camp at night before I hit bed just to make sure I'm getting some decent sleep. In my typical day-to-day -day life, I try to stay away from it so I'm not completely screwing up my system. But yeah, during a hike, I definitely take vitamin I. How do you deal with a wet tent? Sometimes just the dew leaves it very wet in the morning. So yeah, great point. Um, do condensation, if it's raining, a tent does get very wet and it's kind of a pain in the ass, especially if you wake up from camp in the morning and it's still raining. So what Snuggles and I did both in 15 and 16 on the Appalachian Trail is we actually carried some gallon Ziploc bags and we kept those in our tent stuff sack. So if we got up in the morning and the tent was wet and we just wanted to get out of camp so we weren't sitting there in the rain, we would actually take the tent and the fly, both separate, and put them in a gallon zip bag and pretty much just stuff it in there. Now whenever the rain stopped for the day and maybe we got into a nice sunshiny location, we would stop for lunch or a break or water and we would take the tent out and we would dry it. Sometimes hanging it off our trekking poles, maybe hanging it on a shelter. Sometimes I would even hang it and we would try to get it as dry as possible, stuff it back up. That way, whenever we got to camp that night, we could set up a dry tent. Because there's nothing worse than getting to camp, especially when it's already raining and having to set up a wet tent, crawling inside of a wet tent. It's an awful experience. And we've had to do that a couple times, but we try to avoid that by simply drying out the tent and the fly sometime during the day. You never have snuggles with you on your YouTube videos. How come? So not true Chuck, actually Snuggles is with me a lot. She is actually usually behind the camera, not today, but she's usually always with me during my videos. She's just kind of camera shy. She doesn't like to be in a lot of videos. Now as far as a lot of my travel videos, if you've watched any of my Appalachian Trail videos from 2015 or 2016, she's in all of those. She's also usually my guinea pig when I'm shooting B-roll and I need someone to lay down on a sleeping mat or a sleeping pad or crawl inside of a sleeping bag. So she is in a lot of my videos. But she has her blog and stuff, so a lot of times she does her own separate media and then I kind of take care of the YouTube videos. Now later on this year when we leave, hit the road and start traveling again, she will be in a lot of the videos again because I'm gonna start a weekly travel vlog while we're on the road, while we're on the trail. So you'll be seeing her a lot in upcoming videos. So if you need your snuggles fixed, just hold out a little bit more. I don't know if you guys can see those on your screen, but I'm getting eaten up by gnats out here. I see that both you and Snuggles wear prescription glasses. How about providing a few tips for wearing prescription glasses on the trail? Also, have you ever considered daily contacts? I know there are some hikers that use these. So yeah, both Snuggles and I do wear our glasses. We don't do anything special. Um, we just wear our glasses. Yeah, they get dirty. Yeah, they can be kind of annoying but I try to stay away from contacts. Number one, I don't wanna carry extra stuff like solution and the little pack. Number two, um, your hands are just constantly dirty and nasty, so being able to like put a contact on your finger and kinda of shove that in your eye, I kinda of wanna avoid getting a bunch of nasty dirt and scum in my eye, so not a good idea for me. I have met a handful of hikers on the trail that do use contacts, but for the most part, People just wear their glasses. And I don't really have any tips and tricks for wearing glasses. Um, 
just kind of watch out, make sure they don't drop and break and scratch. Um, yeah, that I'm not very good on that topic. But I've had nothing but good luck from wearing glasses. I've never broke a lens yet. I've never hardcore scratched up my glasses. Uh, actually, the lenses that I have in these glasses were both from 2015 and 2016 on the AT, and I'm still rocking them. I can still see out of them. And they walked that entire length of the trail. So yeah, contacts, not really for me. Snuggles is not a contact person either. We just kind of rock our glasses and deal with it. How much money does it cost to hike the whole AT? Joe, that is a pressing question, and there's not really a definitive answer for everyone. Everyone is different. Everyone's going to have their own hike, hence the term hike your own hike. Some people love spending a lot more money, stopping at a lot more restaurants, staying in a lot of hotels, hostels, and some people really like keeping it minimalist, only staying in shelters and campsites, buying super cheap food, maybe even sending themselves resupply boxes. So that answer is totally up in the air. It's gonna be different for everybody. I can tell you from personal experience that between 2015 and 2016, Snuggles and I, as a couple, spent $10 thousand dollars now that was ten thousand dollars not only for trail expenses but also getting out to the trail and for a handful of pieces of gear but in total it was around ten thousand dollars probably about eight thousand dollars total for just food resupply shelter laundry things like that um, and about two thousand dollars on some extra gear travel expenses getting back out to the trail and coming home next year in 2018 when i hike the pct i'm going to try to do it solo on between four and five thousand dollars so we'll see how that goes but yeah man it's going to be completely different for everybody all i can say is if you're saving money it's probably best to save more than less um, and if you don't spend it all, that's fine. Then you have like an awesome nest egg that you can come off the trail with. But there are a lot of hikers that have had to end their hikes or cut it short just because they ran out of funds, because they weren't really smart with how they budgeted their money. They spent too much in the beginning and they had to end up getting off the trail because they couldn't afford to hike anymore. So definitely save as much money as possible. Do as much research as possible and find out what type of hiker you are and what type of hike that you want to have. In your trips, have you met many who were on the trail alone for the first time? Is it better to take your first time extensive trip with someone else who's experienced? There's nothing like learning from firsthand experience, but I'm curious if most people just dive right in alone or not. So yeah, I've actually met a lot more people out on the trail who are out there alone for the first time than people that are with someone else. There are a ton of people that hike long distance trails by themselves and a lot of people that are out there for their first time on the trail. It's totally a learning experience. And I think the best way to learn something, especially a through hike, backpacking, something like that is getting out there and just learning as you go. Now, obviously before you get out there, you should try to do as much research and learn as much as possible. Hence why there's so many hikers and so many through hikers that do YouTube channels to be able to share some knowledge with you guys to kind of help you get prepared. But the only way that you're really gonna learn is to get out there be on the trail and learn all that stuff as you go. Because even experienced hikers or experienced backpackers or through hikers still have a lot to learn. And every time you go out on the trail, you learn something new about what you're doing. That's the beauty of it, is it is a never ending learning process. So every time I go out and do a trip, I learn something new and I figure out something that I thought that I knew was right and it's not, or something that used to work for me and doesn't work anymore. So hikers and backpackers are constantly evolving. So the best way to learn is to get out on the trail and let the trail teach you. All right, guys, last question of the week, and then I'm gonna get the hell out of all these bugs eating me alive. You completed the AT, sectioned hike to the CDT. Why did you choose the PCT to be the last of the big three to tackle? Many feel it may be the most beautiful overall trail in the world. I live in the San Diego area and have section hiked much of the PCT in my area, and it's amazing. So Mike, it is not the last trail I'm gonna tackle. There are a ton of trails out there and a lot that I eventually want to be on. The AT, the PCT, and the CDT are just the main big three. As far as it being the last of the big three, I've only really done a handful of small sections on the CDT, so I don't even count the CDT. And I'm sure one of these days, I might look at through hiking the CDT in its entirety. So the PCT is not the last stop for me. As far as why the PCT next, um, coming from the AT, 
I just want my next trail experience to be completely different from the East Coast and the PCT, the West Coast is obviously the best way to do that. Now, I would have jumped on the CDT next, but I do live here in New Mexico, so I'm pretty used to these types of conditions. But the PCT is just one that I think that a lot of people when they get off of the AT, the PCT is just next in line. People tend to save the CDT for the last trail that they do. Now, as far as I'm concerned, after doing the AT, I wanna go do the PCT. And then after that, I actually want to tackle some smaller trails. So not necessarily the 3,000, two to 3,000 mile trails. I wanna tackle some of these small seven to 800 mile trails and knock a lot of those smaller long distance trails off my list. And I think you'll see a lot of through hikers doing that in the upcoming years, mainly because the big trails are starting to get kind of overpopulated and people want a little bit more of a secluded trail experience. So I think a lot of those smaller trails are gonna get a lot more use. Regardless, I cannot wait to get out on the PCT next year and share that whole trip with you guys. The plan as of right now is to completely vlog that entire trail and share that whole trail experience with you guys. I tried to do it a little bit on the AT where I was doing weekly uploads, but I'm gonna try to do it a little bit different this time and wanna bring you guys along on my journey. All right guys, so if you wanna leave a question for next week's Q&A, you can either leave it in the comment box below or send me a video question over to Darwin on the trail at yahoo.com and then next week I'll answer as many as I possibly can. So I wanted to take a second to thank you guys so much. I just recently hit 14,000 subscribers, which is nuts to me. You know, two years ago when I started this channel, I never thought that I would even get a thousand people who would give a damn about what I have to say about hiking and backpacking and travel. But lo and behold, there's 14,000 of you that actually care what I have to say. And I really appreciate your guys' input. So my question to you is what type of media do you want to see me make more? Obviously I have the tips and tricks videos. I do a gear review most every Sunday and now have the Q and A. What do you guys wanna see me make more? What type of videos have I done that you wanna see me cover more on that topic? In September, Snuggles and I will be hitting the road again and living in our camper full time. We're gonna be headed further out west and spending from September until I start the PCT doing a lot of traveling. So the plan as of now is to start an adventure travel vlog to share with you guys on a weekly basis. It's something that I've been wanting to do for a while and I've kind of teased with it a little bit with preparation for the AT last year and then some of my hiking videos. But tell me what you guys think about that. So recently I started a Patreon account. If you're not familiar what Patreon is, it's essentially a way for you to help support my channel, to get better camera equipment, better lighting, more gear to do reviews on, and to also help with travel expenses. So if you wanna check that out, I'll put a link in the description box below of our Patreon account. You can pledge like a dollar or more a month, and essentially what that will help me do is not only do my hike of the PCT next year, which I really want to focus on bringing that trail to you guys, but also on helping us get new gear. And then in return, I have some really awesome rewards you guys should check out, uh, giving away some stickers, some Darwin on the trail patches, which if you've been following me on Instagram, you'll see that picture that I just posted yesterday. I'll be doing a members only private Q&A session on Facebook Live, so that's really cool. Some pack shakedowns and some other stuff, so go check that out if you're interested in supporting the channel. But there's no obligation to going and supporting my channel. I'll always make media for you guys. It'll always be free. I love sharing videos and Q&As and my trips and stuff with you guys. That's why I started the channel. It's why I love to do it. But if you are interested in supporting grow this channel, moving it a little bit farther and producing a little bit better media, um, definitely go check that out. If you found any value in this video, go ahead and hit that like button. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. As always guys, thanks for watching. Now, I'm gonna get the hell out of here because I'm tired of these bugs.